Welcome to Unpolluted. The Earth Prize team is proud to present their first podcast. This will be a monthly gathering where we will talk about inspirational and environmental conversations. I am Angela McCarthy, the CEO of the Earth Foundation, and we are thrilled to be here today with some very important guests. Uh, we completed our first year of the Earth Prize competition at the end of March 2022 and announced the winners. Um, we also have in store for you uh, one of our newest ambassadors, Navia, uh, who will, we will introduce very shortly. And we also have next to us uh, right here, Komal, who is uh, co-hosting with me today, who is part of the Earth Prize team. And she will be heading the strategy and operations um, of everything that we do. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice, to, uh, nice to be here and meet you all finally. So they have just flown in, our incredible team Adorbsies from Vietnam. So we're so excited to have you on our very first podcast. Thank you. How are you feeling? Feeling good. A little jet lag maybe, but okay, just hanging in there? Oh, fantastic. Well, as you know, we're very proud of you and all that you achieved through uh, the Earth Prize competition. And uh, we're very, very sure that we are gonna know about you and your names going further in the future. Now, I'd also like to introduce one of our newest ambassadors, Navia Navelli Nanda. And she's joining Hi. us over Zoom. Hi, Navia. Hello. Hi. Before I introduce you properly, I do want to share that, in fact, how I know of Navia is because I was at school with her mother. Not that I want to put an age on myself, <laughs> but we were in the same class in boarding school. And I was following her mother on Instagram, the beauty of social media. And then I started following Navia. And as time was going by, I was more and more amazed by all that you are doing. And I reached out to your mom and asked if we could get in touch. And here we are now. She's our newest ambassador. And you've done amazing things. You are behind Project Navelli, which is a nonprofit initiative supporting gender equality in India and also the co-founder of Ara Health, a woman-centric health tech company in India. Is that correct? Yes. Did I say it all right? Yes. You have done so many amazing things already. Uh, there's so much we want to learn from you. And there's a lot of crossover between our amazing team of Dorbsies here. So, yeah, Komal, definitely. do you want to? jump in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So for us, you know, welcome to the Earth Prize family. We're so excited to have you here. And maybe we can start by you telling us a little bit about yourself. How are you? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I, I just wish I was in the studio with everyone else. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to finally um, meet Team Adorbsies. I've heard so much about them and the work that they've done. So I'm really excited to be talking to them today. Uh, but thank you for such a warm welcome to the Earth Prize family. It really is very exciting to be a part of this. And um, especially after speaking to Angela, I was even more excited about everything that, you know, we're going to work on together. So thank you for having me a part of the family. Um, to quickly introduce uh, myself, my name is Navya and I'm 24 years old. I live in India, in Mumbai. And um, over the last two years, um, I co-founded a company called Ara Health, which is a women's healthcare platform in India. And we basically focus on providing medically reliable information uh, to women about very stigmatized uh, feminine health uh, topics. Um, as you know, feminine health and hygiene is a very stigmatized conversation in India today. Uh, so all the efforts that we make at ARA is to try and make those conversations um, easier for women. Uh, so that's something I've been working on for the last two years. And also, uh, like you mentioned, Angela, I also have a nonprofit called Project Naveli. Um, the Naveli comes from my middle name. And um, uh, that nonprofit focuses on a lot of different projects where we try and help encourage gender equality in India. Um, so we focus on helping women with financial independence, um, legal rights and awareness, and also healthcare. Um, so that's just a little quick summary of what I've been doing for the last two years. It's truly very impressive. And from what I understand, you've been doing this during COVID. Most of this was created. Is that, is that right? 
Yes, yeah, so Ara Health was actually, um, you know, founded in the middle of the lockdown um, in 2020. So me and my co-founders actually met on Zoom for the first time and decided to start this company together. So all that we've actually done over the last two years has been um, mainly during the lockdown and during, you know, the entire pandemic situation. It's interesting because we'll, we'll dive into a little mm -hmm. further, but uh, our team over here have a similar story. So mm -hmm. Even through this very dark time, and it was difficult, so many amazing things have come from it. And I think that's something to take away, uh, that you can always do something great, even in difficult circumstances. And you certainly have proven to do that, my dear. Really amazing, yeah. really. We're so, so proud of you and your achievements at such a young age. You know, it's, it's amazing. But I would like to introduce you to our three special guests today. We have Uyen and Huyen and Dorothy. So excited to have you here. And just for those who don't know, they're the first ever winners of the Earth Prize. And Amazing. <laughs> um, and their winning solution was the biodegradable sanitary pad, which is made out of dragon fruit peels. Amazing. We'll speak a little bit about, you know, you guys first, and then we'll dive into um, your solution. But could each of you tell me a little bit about yourself and where did you grow up and your background? We can start with Dorothy first. So my name is Dorothy. I'm currently a sophomore in high school and I come from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. So I'm one of the co-founders of um, Adoripsy and we work together to create this project. Yeah, and I'm Huyen, a rising senior this year. And for this project, I'm in charge of the logistic and financial aspects. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Uyen. I'm 17 and I'm also a rising senior. I grew up in Hanoi, Vietnam, and I'm in charge of the technical aspects of mm -hmm. our products. Oh, wow. What I want to know is how exactly did you meet the three of you? Because well, someone, I think, told me you only recently met, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually met through a online SAT course. Um, and there we knew each other and sort of like texted each other and like we're online friends. So typically like once a week we would have like a call meeting each other and hanging out. And we would have a hobby to um, purchase like um, environmental items to like try ourselves and then recommend to each other because as like all very environmental girls it's like a fun hobby for us um, and then when we were checking out the uh, menstruation section we noticed that there were no biodegradable sanitary pads and so um, initially as a joke we said we would um, create something to fill out that gap and then um, it was brought up again later as a serious idea where we would want to develop this project and so um, Adorpsy started since then. And how did you hear about the Earth Prize? It actually got published into my school website mm -hmm. about the Earth Prize and we just thought that it would be a great chance for us to enter since we already have the project on our mm -hmm. mind mm -hmm. and yeah it's really fortunate that we did. Could you possibly have imagined when you signed up that you were going to be winning and here <laughs> with us in Switzerland? Well, no, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all like believed in our project and we were confident in the work that we've done. But then at the same time, there were like so many other amazing projects that are also represented by the Earth Prize. And then we also um, were sort of like worried that our project wasn't um, like enough. Enough, maybe. <laughs> well, you got that really wrong, that part, huh? <laughs> yeah, more than enough. Um, no, it's, it's truly impressive what you've achieved. And I'm so interested about how you came to join this idea of dragon fruit and the menstrual pads and how you brought it together. Well, it, initially we didn't really know what material we were going to use. We were researching different fabrics, different um, materials to replace the SAPs, mm -hmm. which is like the most polluting part of the pad. Mm -hmm. And then we were kind of in a dead end in, I think, July of last year, where a drag we had a dragon fruit crisis because like all of the borders were closed and we couldn't export any dragon fruit. Mm -hmm. So 
And then Uyen already knows that citrus peels, they have absorbent materials, mm -hmm. uh, absorbent properties. So we looked into the dragon, fr the dragon fruit peel mm -hmm. to see if it also works. And fortunately, it did. I just, I, uh, everyone I've spoken to so far who asked me, who won, who won? <laughs> and when I tell them what the solution was, the part they love the most is how you join those two mm -hmm. pieces and put them together. And that, that's truly uh, what the Earth Prize is all about. At the end of the day, we want students to go much deeper into their imagination, which you have, and you see things so differently than slightly older people like myself see mm -hmm. things, and what you can actually do. Um, and I think for us, what we really wish for you now is to bring your solution to life, which I know mm -hmm. you're on the path to doing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so interesting that you guys are working on, you know, projects related to women's health and menstruation because that's something Navya is working on as well. And Navya, for you, is there something that triggered you or interested you? How did th this all start for you? Um, I think looking at obviously women's healthcare in, in India, I think as a young woman myself living in India, um, you know, you do feel sometimes it is difficult to get access to healthcare, And I don't just mean, um, you know, in terms of a doctor's appointment, but even access to information, because a lot of conversations around women's bodies, um, you know, menstruation, um, sexual health is very, very stigmatized in India, and it's not openly discussed or talked about. So a lot of women don't have platforms and places that they can go to to get reliable inf information or even to simply talk to each other about their bodies. Um, so I think that's uh, where we really wanted to come in with ARA was to create a safe space for women. And because my co-founders and I are young girls living in India, I think it was more from personal experience of not having a place where you could go to to get your questions answered. So I think we really wanted to be that platform where women and especially young girls like ourselves felt safe to come and, you know, talk about their bodies and also learn at the same time. I love that. I think that's something you guys can relate to as well because you guys are com you come from Vietnam and it, it, they're the subject of women's health and menstruation. It's still, it, it's still a hush-hush topic or? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. We, like, it's a lot similar to what's in India, even mm -hmm. though it has gotten progressively better with the later generations. We can, like us girls, we can easily talk about it among ourselves. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we've all had challenges like dealing with the hygiene during menstruation in our first, like our first period because of the lack of information mm -hmm. and lack of discuss discussion it gets. Even like my, our, our moms, they just give us very basic, uh, like very basic education on the matter mm -hmm. and then the rest like anything that comes outside of just how to care and like how to like you know care for the blood that comes out like mm -hmm. anything outside of that we have to figure out on our own mm -hmm. so it was a bit of a journey well, I think. you you all are trailblazing for all the other young ladies mm -hmm. out there and they are going to be very grateful to you one day mm -hmm. that you uh you cleared the path for them to to make this not such a taboo subject and more mm -hmm. comfortable so it's mm -hmm. amazing you guys wanted to ask a few questions to Navya as well about her project and her work. Don't be shy. <laughs> ask you can you can say whatever you we can ask whatever you want. <laughs> I know that both of you 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 did everything virtually. You worked on it virtually. Oh, virtually. You've worked on it virtually. Um, but I think what's somehow what I would love is for the two of you, mm -hmm. well, the three Four. of you and Navya mm -hmm. to meet one day to see how you can actually propel this and accelerate it to around the world. Because you're handling it in Vietnam, you're handling it in India. The Earth Prize is global, um, and a global family at that. I think it'd be so wonderful if somehow you could connect in a way with what you've done and what you're doing, Navya, to really showcase it around the world. Is that something you had in mind? Or are you focusing yeah, on I India? Think definitely, because um, I mean, especially with everything that they've done, um, you know, big congratulations to you guys for doing such amazing work. And I think it's it's so nice to see, um, you know, young women like us trying to come up with solutions that, you know, we haven't been given for so long. And I really appreciate the efforts that you have made to kind of um, not only make, um, you know, sanitary pads accessible, but also environmentally friendly, because 
that's um you know a, an aspect that we forget entirely when it comes to menstruation and um i definitely see that in india as well that you know though there is a lack of access to sanitary pads there isn't really an understanding at the same time of how damaging it can be for the environment and um you know we don't often talk about environmentally friendly disposable methods for sanitary pads and i think that what you guys are doing is amazing so i would love to um you know bring it to india and help um in any way that i can to make people here kind of use this product because i think um you know the environment could do with it <laughs> see that that's very much what we wish for at the earth prize competition is that not only do you enter the competition you you get inspired you get educated you grow uh you have now discovered that what was like a funny idea is potentially going to hit the market one day change people's lives uh, and you will never be forgotten as well as what what you're doing Navia but i think what's so important for us is that we connect you through our network uh to people that are on similar paths to make these things happen And so I I definitely see something where we will bring you together and we can do something very powerful to continue your work and to accelerate because that's the key the time is the issue these days right is to push it forward. So did you have any thoughts about how Navia came came into doing all this she was by herself you know you're a team so yeah. even though you you weren't all together physically you were chatting to each other inspiring each other, you know, sharing thoughts and ideas. She was alone. So I I wonder how how is that? I mean, obviously at Ara I do have my uh co-founders, so yes. they uh, I mean, the four of us really did pretty much the same thing that I'm assuming, you know, team Adorbsies did, which was probably bounce off a lot of ideas with each other, but when it came to project navili that was something that i did on my own and i think that was a little bit more difficult because um i think trying to find the right people in the same space as you who are interested in doing the same things that you're trying to do can be a little difficult sometimes so i'm actually really happy and grateful that you know the earth prize has kind of connected me to team adorbsies because it's really rare to find um you know other people who are interested in in menstruation and and women's health and i'm really happy that i kind of got a chance to meet you guys and hopefully do something together as well in the future so next up for you india next up for you <laughs> vietnam and i'm not just going to yes. come along wherever we go i do actually um, have a question for yeah, yeah please for yes. so i was going to ask so for us it's creating a plan and like coming up with this project this idea for the earth ties through the like i mean during the pandemic but for you it's actually creating a company and actually like getting attention from the public and running this project from the ground up so i was going to ask like how did you actually um like gain the attention and like start the company during the pandemic like how do you sorry i couldn't hear the last part of what you said so my question is like how did you like uh bring attention to your project like when you initially started like during the covid pandemic so we actually um because we were in the middle of the lockdown we realized that a lot of people were going to be at home and not outside doing what we'd normally do if we weren't in a lockdown so we tried to take advantage of that by using um social media because everybody was on social media <laughs> during the lockdown um everyone was on their phones uh so what we tried doing was um you know we we started an instagram page where we started putting out all this content around women's health which um you know was really rare for something in india because we didn't have anyone putting out you know information about periods and sexual health on Instagram. Um so we started putting out all this information on Instagram and we built our website um and we were doing a lot of videos and blogs um and we basically realized that a lot of women who were, you know, sitting at home during the lockdown were actually really interested in reading about 
um, the things that we were talking about through the blogs and the videos. And I think because the lockdown lasted almost a year, I think by the end of the lockdown, we had so many women who were, um, you know, asking us to talk about a lot more uh, topics. And I think it was really the power of um, social media and using that to talk about, um, you know, things that you wouldn't normally see on social media and using it in a more responsible way that I think that's where we managed to get the eyeballs and the attention from, you know, the audience. Which makes sense. Actually, it's great. Finally, people had a bit of time, right? Yeah. And, and that's true. You captured their attention. People were reading, looking up so many different things that they normally would never have the chance to... Uh, and social up. media is such a powerful tool. Now you're on your phone and then, you know, her project took off. And I, I kept seeing your hashtag entrepreneur everywhere. So I, I, I yeah, looked it up. Could, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about that? So entrepreneur is uh, one of the projects that I'm working on through my nonprofit. And um, basically in India, in Hindi, Nari means woman. So what we tried to do was, um, you know, create kind of a pun where it says entrepreneur. So it actually means like a woman entrepreneur. Um, and that is the hashtag that, you know, we we've been using on social media and it's been really successful because um, our goal through entrepreneur is to encourage more Indian women to, um, you know, start businesses or even become financially independent. So we help them. Um, through our ecosystem and resources to start their own businesses. And if they've already got small businesses, then uh, we help them scale it by giving them, you know, mentorship or access to resources and communities. So um, that hashtag also really kind of took off during the lockdown because um, we saw that a lot of women were starting businesses from their homes during the lockdown because they had so much time. Um, and it wasn't, you know, anything big. It was very small things like a tiffin service where they were making food and, you know, giving it out to people, um, you know, during the lockdown or things like handicrafts, making bags. Um, so they were starting these businesses and we wanted to encourage them to, you know, continue doing that even after the lockdown. So uh, that's kind of where entrepreneur came in and the hashtag really kind of stuck around and worked on social media as well. Yeah, I, I love the hashtag. Yeah, They've combined great. entrepreneur and I. So cool. And it's, <laughs> that's the same question with you guys. How did you come up with Adorbsies? Um, Funny thing, because <laughs> we were... <laughs> When it comes to menstrual pads, like no one, no one would think that it's something cute, right? <laughs> so, but then, but then when we designed our like our concept for the product, mm -hmm. we picked out I think some kind of we picked out a palette, and it was all purple, pink, and cherry shades. Mm -hmm. We were like, mm, this is a bit cute. It's so, it's something new for for like you know menstrual pad products. So we wanted to play with the word adorable mm -hmm. and absorbent. Yeah. See? Uh -huh. oh, and then oh, adorable. Yeah. There you go. The okay. two of you, similar similar threads of thought, which is which is which is should be cute in that mm -hmm. way. Then it's not so painful to yeah. think about, right? It's in the smart. start we also wanted to like spread like the idea of biodegradable throughout like the younger generations. And so we plant the primary target demographic to be like younger teens, like maybe later adolescents. Mm -hmm. And so that came with our color palette, our designs, and um, like the way it's also like re represented through our product as well. And so because of that, we also wanted to choose like a name that would be um, like easy to remember and like closer to that demographic, which is where like Adorbsies came from. And that also reminds people that we don't have to do anything like big to become like, you know like protect the environment it just starts mm. from the very little things mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah i like that a lot which is mm -hmm. which yeah. is what we why we showcase our change makers um, on the learning platform um, because through those real life change makers you see that often they started with something very small and from there they grew momentum and it suddenly turned into something so impactful and powerful that they became uh, these real life change makers and that's exactly what you are and also you Navia. Mm -hmm. So I think we're I don't know how our time is going but I think we've got to do this little bit of rapid yes. fire. We like this rapid are fire you question. <laughs> you know these rapid fire questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Quick answer is the first thing that comes to your mind to say it out loud. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. 
Favorite movie? The Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, go to karaoke song. Rapid. None. <laughs> <laughs> None. Fair. Fair. Next. It's rapid fire. Um, favorite book? I don't really read books. <laughs> she just creates things that change the world, but she's, she's not reading books. Do you have a go to karaoke song? I don't go to karaoke either. <laughs> there's, okay. there's more rapid fire um, questions there. And for you, Navya, someone you look up to? Uh, my grandmother. She's going to be listening to this. That's so nice. Oh. Can I ask you? I've thing? met your grandmother, by the way. I know you're Yeah, grandmother. she's quite a powerhouse she's of a woman. Wonderful. So woman. I definitely look up to her. Yeah, I get that. The rock mm -hmm. of the family. Mm -hmm. um, and favorite food? Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Just plain rice or plain rice with something? Plain rice is so <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. That's a bit bland, but okay. Um, dream job. Oh, interesting. Um, Rapid. Investor. Stock investor. Ooh. <laughs> we could see that. We could see that. <laughs> um, staying in or going out? Going out. Oh, oh there we go. All right. Um, and for you, Navya, favorite childhood memory? Um, I think probably anything when I was in, in boarding school. My favorite memories. <laughs> Where, where did you go? That's unusual, by the way, but yes. <laughs> I know, I, I really loved boarding school. I went to uh, Seven Oaks in London, in Kent. It was in England. So. I do, uh, yeah, so I was school. there for five years, and oh, wow. probably my best memories are from there. Fantastic. And mine are from Eglon. You see how you <laughs> carry that with you and all the different things uh, that you yeah. do. So I think we're going to have to mm -hmm. wrap, wrap it, it up. up for our very first podcast. Um, we're going to have another one in August. So you, you, next time you can relax and you can listen to August's yeah. podcast. <laughs> um, but I really just I wanted to thank Navia so much mm -hmm. for joining us and for our incredible winners to be here with us in Switzerland, live, mm -hmm. in person. Um, it's, it's been such a treat mm -hmm. so far. And, we have a few more days with you, so I know we're going to talk about a lot of interesting things. Mm -hmm. Just a little reminder that pre-registration for the Earth Prize is open. So if you pre-register now, you'll get a reminder on the 1st of September to officially sign up. Seven Oaks, I think we need to get them, Navia. Um, yeah. We'll talk to them. And many more schools And many, India many well. more schools as well all around the world. We want and wish for them to have an amazing experience like you have had so far. And I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to listen to us today or watching us today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye.